As everybody knows, Mr. Speaker, New Zealand First lives in the real world. <laughs> New Zealand First recognises. Oh, we'll tell you shortly. Just be patient. Just, I know it's going to be good. And I know it's going to be relevant to the National Party. But you're going to have to be patient. Now, we recognise that international threat assessments are warning of the increasing risk of crime syndicates and individuals targeting Australasia for sports match fixing. <coughs> and what is match fixing about? It's paying someone to underperform. It's paying someone not to do their job. To actually put in an inferior performance. Now, there have been high profile match fixing cases in Australia. And unless we address this practice and take it seriously, match fixing will significantly damage the integrity value and growth of New Zealand sport and our reputation as a nation. Now, we agree that this bill will address match-fixing risks and that those risks are real. We've got the Cricket World Cup coming next year. We've got the FIFA Under-20 Football World Cup here next year. It's pretty important that we get on top of this legislation now. Now, we know that, of course, match-fixing worldwide is dynamic. And it's a fast developing area of law globally in terms of what countries are seeking to do. Now, while we support this bill, we consider it does not go nearly far enough. Because match fixing in sport is bad and must be stopped. But match fixing in politics is much worse. Match fixing in politics is much worse. We heard Judith Collins talking about integrity and issues like that. See, match fixing uh, undermines the very core of our democracy. Absolutely. It pays people to underperform and not do their job. It pays people like Goldsmith to pull down his hoardings in Epsom. Yep. To pull down his hoarding in Epsom. Shocking. How they can possibly talk of integrity and get up in his house and extol the virtues of what they're doing is simply beyond any rational, reasonable New Zealander. Match fixing in politics stinks. It's corrupt. It goes to the very character of our society and it's being condoned by the National Party today because they are its main proponents. Now, needless to say, one party in this parliament has never done that and never will. For 21 long years and 21 to come, we have stood on our own. We have never taken money off people like that for any political purpose. And they can make allegations. I fought a, I fought a court case. I fought a court case, you recall, an electoral petition, and Nick Smith fought a defamation case. Right? Did he ever declare it? No, he didn't. He told Parliament this, and yet Margaret Baisley, the registrar, told me in a letter which I'm happy to table, that he never did declare it. In short, Mr Smith, you deceived Parliament. So don't sit there thinking you can get away with that fraud and deceit today. Oh, yes, that's true. I've got Margaret Basie's letter. Do you want to see it? And if you do see it, and I'm not telling the truth, will you promise to resign? No, you won't. Order, order, order. Yes. The, the, member, the member is far wide of the... Order, please is far wide of the intent and the principles of this bill. This is about, um, about um, you know, the, 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 it's about sport, it's crimes, match fixing. So I ask the member to come back to relate to the principles of this bill. Uh, Honourable, right Speaker, Honourable Winston. I have, never left, I have never left those principles. I'm saying match fixing stinks. And it stinks at all level in, levels in society. It stinks if somebody fixes, for example, nomination forms up or... Uh, uh, scholarships for a certain family to go to university and denies more talented families the chance. All those things are rotten, they corrode society. But at its highest level, we've got match fixing in politics. So how can you possibly say to the sports people, this is wrong, this cannot go on, we're going to stop it, and yet condone it in your own business or your own profession? Pray tell me that, Mr Nara. Now, Mr Mitchell, could you possibly tell me that? And for the faint, embarrassed voice, the faint, embarrassed voice from down in the South Island, Jackie Dean, why are you smiling? Do, does Jackie Dean believe that 
rotting the system, that cheating the system is right. Now, Jackie Dean comes from an electorate where people down there believe in the law. They've got principles. Why is the MP out of step? Why does she think it's a laughing matter to match fix? Now, Jackie, no, no, Miss, Miss, Miss Dean, don't try and shout out like, you know, just open your mouth and let the wind blow your tongue around. We need a better performance from you than that. And in fact, you know, there's only seven weeks to go and it's quite possible that member won't be here. Now, we know we will be. Yeah, absolutely. We know we will be. For example, if you come down to the Kelston Hall, Sunday the 10th at 1.30, you'll see what showtime looks like as we launch our campaign. And anybody who hears that out there, would you please tell your neighbour? Especially if you're in West Auckland, come down yourself. It's free, it's welcome, it'll be enlightening. Now, there we're going to be talking about sport match fixing, but particularly, particularly we're going to be talking about political match fixing, because if the principle's wrong for sport, then it, it is wrong for politics. How can the National Party say one thing about sport and match fixing, and yet be its main guilty proponents when it comes to the big issue of democracy in our country? It's just wrong. Yes, the, the, the Labour member from the far end you know, there, from the West Coast, Mr O'Connor, is right. He says, why don't they lead by example? Why don't they lead by example? But you know, there's an old saying. You know, there's an old saying. He who pays, who, ah, oh, yes, here's a minister, poor minister of police. The minister of police. The minister of police. Lead by example. Boy, that struck a nerve, didn't it? Now she starts shouting. This is someone who jacks up and match fixes the crime statistics. Oh, yeah. oh, she has. Got caught doing it. Got caught doing it. Said, she said, this is what she said. This is what she said when she got caught. It's not happening, but if it is, I'm going to investigate it. All in the same sentence. It's not happening, but if it is, I'm going to investigate it. Now you try and rationalise or make logic of that statement. Oh, yes, we're going to... Oh, no, no, I know the member's embarrassed. I know the Minister of Police is seriously embarrassed because it's all about the old saying, he who pays the piper calls the tune. And it's bad in sport and it's revolting in politics. It lowers the standards of this one great democracy. Can you imagine he, Keith Holyoke or people like that condoning this sort of thing? He'd be rolling in his grave. But then again, there are some members there who have never heard of Keith Holyoke. I never heard of him. Don't know what he stood for. Mind you, he was a nationalist. He did believe in putting New Zealand first. <laughs> he said he did believe in putting New Zealand first and not trying to buy a result. That's why he was our longest serving uh, national prime minister. And boy, I think you guys are in trouble this time because you aren't going to make it. I know what the National Party's latest polls say. I know what they say about New Zealand first. And you can't match fix those. Oh, no, 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 Mr Smith. You are going to be seriously concerned because there's one thing that's going to happen, match fixing in sport or whatever. In these seven weeks, every week we're going to climb and every week you're going to be more and more nervous and the match fixing will not save the National Party. What a tragedy. Mind you, they could disown their practice. They could say, put the hoardings up, Mr Goldsmith. Put them up and no hurry you. Campaign real hard for the National Party. But no, they'll probably make that fatal mistake of thinking that everything of value can be bought. Well, it can't. Um, I call uh, Chris Farfield. <clears throat> Thank you very much, uh, Mr Speaker. Um, uh, and can I just...